All right, to find the arc length of a parametric curve, uh, we do something similar to the case of functions. So let's say we start out with x is a function of t and y is a function of t. And here's our parametric curve. The way we're going to compute the length of this is to pick a bunch of values of t. So say we start here at t equals a and here at t equals b. So we're going to pick a bunch of t values between a and b and these correspond to a bunch of points on the curve. And what we're going to do is add up the lengths of the line segments we get from these points. So with few points it looks pretty bad, but the more and more points you take, it should get better and better. And so let's see the length of one of these segments is going to be... So this is the length of one line segment and we can use an argument similar to before to show that this is actually some integral. One, one way we can argue that is we can we can use the mean value theorem again to to write down the difference between f at the two points and the difference between the two t values, and this is delta t, as the derivative at some point in between the two. We can do the same thing with g. We can do the same thing with g, except uh, the mean value theorem only tells us that there's some point that this is equal to the derivative, and it may not be the same as the one here. But in any case, we can turn this into we can turn the distance between the two points into this, and we can even factor out a delta t, and and this looks sort of like a piece of a Riemann sum. It's not exactly a Riemann sum because we're evaluating at two different points, but it turns out that's not such a big issue, and and in the limit as this as the number of points goes to infinity, we get the following integral. In the limit, as n goes to infinity, we get the following integral, and this is our formula for arc lengths. Here's another way to write the arc length, just different notation. And we can see that this agrees with our previous formula for arc length in the case when when y is a function of x. Well, we can factor out the dx dt uh, when that derivative is positive, like this. And let's say x of a is capital A and x of b is capital B. And we notice that this part here is dy dx squared. So we're really doing the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx. And this is by the chain rule. or substitution. So here's an example. Uh, we want to set up an integral for the arc length of this curve, x equals 1 plus e to the t, y is t squared, and t goes from negative 3 to 3. So just using this formula, x dt is e to the t, and dy dt 
is 2t, so we just have e to the t squared plus 2t squared dt. I guess I can simplify a little bit. And so this will be the arc length. But we get sort of a nasty integral. Here's another example. We want to find the length of the curve given by x is e to the t plus e to the minus t and y is 5 minus 2t between 0 and 3. So using the formula, we have the integral from 0 to 3 of the square root, the derivative of x squared, let's see, the derivative will be this, and the derivative of y will just be negative 2, so we get e to the t minus e to the minus t squared plus negative 2 squared dt. If you multiply the inside out, you get this, uh, and a little 4 minus 2, so just a plus 2. And magically, this thing can be factored. And it's positive, so we're taking the square root of this thing squared. So we really just have and this is something that's not too difficult at all. We get e to the t minus e to the minus t from zero to three. So we get e cubed minus e to the negative 3 minus 0. So this is the length.